What if the ground under one of the greatest mountains in the world had a secret that no one had been able to reach until now? Scientists were shocked by what AI found when it finally scanned Mount Zion. You should stay with us to see this. The ground no one dares to touch. People have thought of the hill in the middle of Jerusalem as holy ground for hundreds of years, not because there wasn't anything under there, but because the cost of digging could quickly cause a fight. The Temple Mount is holy to three different religions and looks like a locked vault. Faith, politics, and memories of wars that changed the city are written on every stone. For a long time, even small amounts of digging have been seen as too dangerous. In the late 1800s, a British army engineer named Charles Warren was the first person to test that line. He went down into shafts and cisterns cut deep into the rock under Jerusalem with only rope, picks, and oil lamps. There were carved tunnels, old water channels, and hollowed out chambers that led him to believe there was a complicated world below the platform. His rough drawings made it look like there was more than just rock beneath. But some people were mad at his work. Religious leaders were afraid that more digging could hurt a holy place or make things worse. People couldn't go any further below the mount because the government blocked the shafts. The hill was closed for almost 100 years. Then there was the Six-Day War in 1967, which changed who ran the old city. Israeli historians started their careful digs at the edges of the mount, where they were allowed to. The Western Wall Tunnel, a small tunnel that runs along the base of the mount, was opened. As they took away ages worth of dirt and rubble, they found blocks from the time of the Second Temple, arches from the time of the Crusaders, and even pieces of early Islamic palaces. These finds showed that the slopes and retaining walls still had past that had not been fully explored. But the heart of the mount stayed off limits. It was still against the law to touch its center platform. It was only by chance that someone came close to seeing its hidden layers. A construction job in the late 1990s moved hundreds of truckloads of dirt from inside the mount to make room for a new entrance. That dirt wasn't put in a database, instead, it was dumped in the Kidron Valley like any other trash. Archaeologists were shocked. Years and years of unbroken stuff had been thrown away without a single record. That anger led to the start of the Temple Mount Sifting Project in 2004. Scientists and volunteers took buckets full of the trashed earth to a park and started to sort it grain by grain. What they dug up from the ground changed a careless mistake into a major step forward in history. A lot of different kinds of objects were found, including pieces of carved stone and pottery, crusader arrowheads, Islamic jewelry, Roman coins, and most surprisingly, things from the time of the first temple, clay boule, with the names of priests from the Hebrew Bible, pieces of religious vessels, ash from burned sacrifices, and a small bronze incense shovel that was dark from smoke from long ago were among them. These findings showed that the land below the mount still had physical signs of the stories in the Bible. They showed that something that many people had thought was just a story had left its mark in ash, bronze, and clay. Still, all of this proof came from soil that had been dug up and spread out. We still didn't know what was under the mount that had been shut off and never been touched by modern tools. The project to sort things changed the argument. If pieces buried in dumped dirt could change parts of Jerusalem's history, then the layers below the platform that haven't been touched might hold much more important clues. Politics and religion, on the other hand, made it clear that no tool would ever be able to break the surface again. Next, we follow the path of those pieces to the moment when modern scanners and AI were used for the first time to look below the mount. Treasures in the dust. The first bucket of earth that had been sifted looked like any other. It was made up of dirt, rocks, and broken pottery. But as the dirt washed and sorted, little pieces started to come out and tell a story that had been buried. Each grain held a piece of information about life on the old hill that had been hidden for hundreds of years until the dirt was accidentally dug up and spread out. It turned out that the past of the mount was written not only in books, but also in things that people had touched, used, and left behind. Bully, which are small bits of clay that have been hardened by fire, were some of the first things that were found. At first glance, they looked like plain buttons, but when you looked more closely, you could see that seals had pressed faint letters into their surfaces a long time ago. 
After carefully cleaning them, names written in an old Hebrew script were found. One seal said, Gael Yahu, son of Immer, which is the name of a priest from the book of Jeremiah. These were not just marks, they were personal seals that were used in the time of the first temple to stamp scrolls and gifts. The hill's Bible history could be held in the palm of your hand. After finding a priest's name written in clay more than 2,500 years ago, the next surprise was a comb made of ivory. It was broken, but it was still whole enough to see the carvings on its teeth. The years had worn it smooth, but there was a faint line of writing on one side. When the letters were enlarged, they showed a sentence written in the early Canaanite language. It was the longest full sentence ever found in that script. It was simple. It was about getting lice out of your hair and beard, but the words were directly about a regular person who used to live on the holy hill. What this one thing did was connect the big buildings to the quiet, daily lives of the people who worked or worshipped there. A bronze incense shovel that had turned black over time was another treasure that changed the mood from everyday to holy. You could still see bits of carbon stuck to its flat edge. These were left over from burned gifts. There were pieces of clay vessels lined with soot next to it, as well as areas of ash mixed with charred animal bone. According to the practices written in temple texts, the ash had been exposed to high heat over and over again in an open fire. These were not just odd kitchen scraps. They were the bodies of people who had died in sacrifices on the mount. The researchers were surprised by how the finds were arranged in the sifted dirt. They were not spread out evenly in each bucket. Instead, they often showed up in groups with bully, pieces of ritual pottery, and bone ash all in the same patches. The pattern suggested that the trash hadn't all come from one open trash can, but from different places, like rooms that had fallen or parts of the temple complex that had been sealed off. Even though they had been moved, the artifacts showed that there used to be a structured religious area that had been buried and broken up over many centuries of rebuilding and destroying. Over time, the collection grew to include arrowheads from crusader battles, coins from Roman and Islamic times, and jewelry that pilgrims had lost. But it was the items from the first temple that made scholars rethink long-held beliefs. Some people have said for decades that Solomon's palace was mostly a story because there wasn't much evidence in the ground. Now, pressed into old clay and stained into bronze and bone, there was proof that rites that were only talked about in the Bible had left their own record. Everything that was taken out of the sieves showed that there was a well-organized place of prayer. There were fires that burned long enough to blacken metal tools, priests who sealed their scrolls, and families who brought animals to sacrifice. Many thinkers were sure that the mount had been much more than just a place where heaven and earth met symbolically. The earth reluctantly told what it knew, but the sealed core still kept its peace. To break the quiet, you'd need tools that could cut through stone without breaking it. The next step in finding would not involve shovels, but rather sensors and AI that would go deep below the mountain to find things that humans could not reach. The Hidden Path Under the Mount By 2021, researchers knew that the shovels were no longer useful. A new group of scientists used tools to get further without taking up any more space. Their plan was brave. They would combine the oldest records from history with the newest technology available today. In the early 1900s, surveyors had hand-drawn maps from the British Mandate era. These maps showed how people had crawled through forgotten shafts under the city. There were hints of passages in these rough sketches that no one had seen in almost 100 years. The team put every line on the maps into a computer and then put them on top of new 3D data of the mount's surface. Next, ground-penetrating radar units were brought in. These send electromagnetic pulses through stone and read the sounds that come back. As the radar went over the area, it cut through the rock layer by layer, like turning the leaves of a secret book. Lastly, they taught an AI pattern recognition system to look through the signals that came back for anything that looked like it was made by humans instead of natural forces. The first studies were mostly done along the southern edge, close to the western wall. This area has a history of rumors of blocked stairs and hidden rooms. Some shapes showed up on the screen when the AI sorted the radar returns. These shapes were sharp-angled holes, parallel walls, and geometric corners that could not have formed naturally. 
the scientists put the old maps that were made by hand on top of the digital scans to see how well they worked. To their surprise, the radar's lines almost exactly lined up with the marks made a hundred years ago on the stairs, tunnels, and locked rooms. The crew had to find a way to get to those strange things without crossing any religious or political lines because they weren't allowed to dig on the mount's surface. They got permission to work from the western wall tunnels that were already there. They didn't dig any new holes, but they did drive sensors and cameras sideways and downward into the rock below the mount's edge. A boring for exploration showed a carved limestone staircase going down rapidly into darkness. This was the first real breach. A remote crawler went down the steps, and its lights fell on an empty antechamber from the Byzantine era. The walls were rough-hewn, but there were crosses etched into them that could barely be seen through centuries of dust. There were shallow lamp niches in the stone, and in one corner, a row of faded Greek letters showed that this room had once been used by early Christian travelers. That find alone showed that there were more holy areas below the plaza that could be seen. The bigger surprise came when radar looked below the old flagstones in the antechamber. At a lower level, the sensors found a platform made of huge ashlar blocks. These are big rectangular stones that fit together so tightly that not even modern drill bits could get through them. Small surface flakes taken from a crack in one block were analyzed using petrography to prove that the limestone came from old quarries outside of Jerusalem that were known to have provided building stone during the time of the first temple. The style of the stonework, monumental, smooth-faced, and laid without mortar, matched the gates of Megiddo in the Iron Age, which were built hundreds of years before King Herod's time. It was clear what this meant. The Byzantine room was built on top of something much older, most likely a base that was there when the first Jewish temple stood on the mount. There were layers of history that the researchers saw, Christian, Roman, and Jewish. It was like each age built on the work of the previous one. The scans then showed that there were more hollows that went beyond the landing of the stairs. These were narrow passageways that led to what looked like storage areas or ritual rooms. Some of these ended in abrupt walls of solid rock, while others were lost in deeper shade. There was a holy rule that said no one could go inside, but radar pictures and boar camera glimpses were enough to make a ghost map of a complex that had been buried and covered over with centuries of pavement. The picture that came up when the combined 3D model was created was shocking. The famous plaza on top with the Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the open prayer halls was like the top layer of a much thicker building. The stories below were sealed off. The water system that shouldn't exist. The radar scans that showed the shape of the chambers under the mount also showed something else that made the experts stop and think. Smooth curves and hollow arcs cut through the stone below the lower walls. These were different from the sharp edges of steps or rooms. When the team first saw them, they thought they were just natural holes in the rock caused by water erosion. It was clear that this wasn't a mistake, as more scans came in because the shapes kept appearing in the same way. The lines on the 3D model were shown in bright blue thanks to AI-assisted photography. When seen as a whole, they made a web of hollow pathways that spread out under the southern slope of the mount. The network connected bigger ovals that looked like cisterns to long, narrow sluice lines that went downhill and then dropped into deeper holes. Other lines went up in a curve to overflow pipes that looked like they let air out toward the outside walls of the retaining walls. It looked like the pattern was planned, like a plumbing grid was carved right into the rock. A probe was put into one of the holes through an old repair bore so they could figure out what they were seeing. The camera beam hit a surface that was edged with pale plaster that was still a little shiny, even though it had been dusty for hundreds of years. It wasn't cave limestone, it was a waterproof layer that people put on it. The lab found that samples taken with a clean scraper had traces of lime-based plaster mixed with broken ceramics. This is an old method for sealing stone so that water doesn't leak through. The carbonate layer of the plaster was used to date it to the 8th to 9th century BCE which is a long time before the Roman aqueducts or Herodian pools. That one detail changed what people thought they knew about the site's engineering schedule. The builders who made these holes were very good at handling water, much better than historians thought was possible at that time. 
it was easier to understand what the grid was for once it was fully mapped out in virtual layers. At the top of the slope, channels were cut at a slight angle to act as graded entrances for seasonal rain and to guide it down slowly so that it wouldn't wash away. The water went into the first level of tanks and then into a second level of deeper cisterns that could hold more water. As pressure relief vents, the walls were cut with narrow outflow slots that let water spill into side shafts before it could burst the main rooms. This system did more than just store things. It kept a steady flow of water for ritual washing, stopped flooding when it rained a lot, and kept the holy courtyards above from getting damaged by water. The whole system was an early way to control flooding in cities and organize water flow that was kept secret. The most interesting room was a wide basin with a higher rim than the others. It was partly full of sediment and had dark ash layers pressed into its plaster lining. The residue, which was looked at under a microscope, contained carbonized organic pieces such as bone slivers, soot, and traces of plant resin, which were consistent with water that had been mixed with burned offerings. The pattern matched what was written in the Book of Chronicles about how channels were built to take away the blood and ash from temple sacrifices so that the areas used for worship stayed clean for the rituals. The finding went against the long-held belief that early temple worship was symbolic but easy to understand. Instead, it showed that religious ceremonies were backed up by well-thought-out infrastructure, which was built by people who combined religious practice with useful engineering. Because they knew about hydraulics, they were able to feed thousands of pilgrims, stop flash floods, and keep holy fires going without letting the smoke get into the courts above. The team followed that strange thing past the water tunnels and into a single room sealed with stone. There. They found the artifact that stopped them in their tracks and took the investigation from engineering to the heart of an ancient ritual, the inscription that stopped the room cold. The last scan showed a single hole deep below the water tunnels. No known corridors could reach this place. The radar outline showed a doorway blocked by stone that led to a small hole cut straight into the rock. Using a bore camera through a very small hole, the team confirmed that there was a three-meter-wide room that hadn't been touched by tools or people in thousands of years. Its lights caught the main feature of the secret room, a low limestone bowl that was half-buried in packed ash and lying on the floor of the room like an abandoned altar. There was a ring of clay oil lamps around it. The wicks had been burned out for a long time, but dried resin and incense still smelled like them. It had been so long since the air inside had been let out that even the soot on the walls still stuck to the walls like the fires had just died yesterday. A portable spectral analyzer with AI added to it ran its beam along the chipped edge of the basin. The software filtered the surface one grain at a time until faint Paleo-Hebrew letters showed up that are almost impossible to see with the naked eye. The broken line turned into a word that meant eternal dwelling or abiding presence. A piece of the stone was taken and linked to mines that were used in the 7th and 8th centuries BCE, which is the same time that the first royal buildings and temples were built in Jerusalem. When epigraphers looked at the letter shapes, they noticed that the style of writing fit the Solomon-era hand that they knew from other Iron Age writings. Scholars were amazed by the find because the chamber's simple design, bare walls, a single basin in the middle, and lamps all around it was similar to how the Holy of Holies, the most restricted area of the first temple, was said to hold the Holy Presence. Outside the lab, reactions broke down quickly. Some Christian thinkers said the room was proof that history and prophecy were coming together in stone. Orthodox Jewish leaders said the investigation was a foul act because it touched a place that was thought to be the Shekinah's resting place and could only be entered by the high priest while following strict routine rules. The Muslim waqf, which is in charge of running them out, said that any more information could make things worse. This is why the media was strictly banned by the government while the data was being checked. Under Mount Zion, history is still speaking. Like, share, and subscribe to Spark Science for more discoveries. And don't miss the next video popping up on your screen. Your journey into the unknown continues.